Sam, we tried to get in here before Christmas, but I know you were really busy moving stuff around. It's now January 2018. What were you doing? What were you moving the workshop around? Well, we were moving a bit around. We were really busy. Um, yeah, we were keeping you guys away so we could just get on with the work. And it's great to have you here now. We've caught up ourselves. So, um, yeah, you're here. Good, good. I wanted to ask you about some of the machines in the machine shop. Yep. Primarily this, this uh, new piece of technology here that you got yep. from Fanet, which is a, the five-axis machine. But it's not the first Fanet you had. You've got two older machines, and quite significantly older. Tell us about those two models and what they've we've, done for you. We've got two previous robo drills. Our first one's in 2002 with a full-axis Nikon unit on. Been fantastic. We then put another one in which we bought used, um, and we've got service guys out to do a little bit of work on it been brilliant we had that for five years and then yep now we've got this one and did the service guys say to you that uh when you talked about getting a service contract they said to you you don't need it these these machines just don't break down yeah they stopped us spending money um they said they don't break down we agreed they don't break down so no and has we, that been the case have they broken down they've never broke down no um we've had to get them in to do a little bit of work when we put a micro lock unit on one just to lower lower it down Generally, reliability is the order of the day. Now, on this model here, uh, what has changed with Fanuc? I know, I know principally the machine's still a three-axis machine, but you've added the two-axis table to it. Are they much faster? Are they much more dynamic? Uh, it's, I think it's a little bit faster. Spindle speed's the same, um, and it's got the BBT tooling, which we don't actually need because we're only cutting plastics and composites, so we're not really stressing the machine. What your comments tell me is it's not that this machine hasn't moved forward much, it's the fact that how advanced the older models were, really. I mean, they were 54 metres a minute, 15,000 spindles. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, how much faster does it really get? It's, um, if we put another machine in 60 metres a minute, it's two years old. So, yeah, we don't need any faster than that. And this is quite interesting, the way you've uh, spec'd this machine out as well, because... Uh, you, you've had a riser block put in the Z axis, so it's meant that you've still got quite a lot of work in envelope, even with that two axis table, correct? Yeah, what we did um, with the 330 millimetres of travel that all robo drills have, we specced it with a 200 mil riser in the back, and then we lifted the five axis unit with 50 millimetres. So we've got the swing to get larger components right down to the table over at 90 degrees, and um, yeah, it's worked great. And what sort of work are you doing on here? Is it all, as a company, are you all, are you all plastics and, and composite materials? Yeah, generally we won't touch any metals at all. If we do, we have to strip everything down, clean it, so we get no contamination into the parts that we make. And how do you go about getting rid of, I mean, we're going to see this running in a minute, and it, yep. it's going at a fair old, a fair old pace. Yep. How do you get rid of all of the, uh, the remnant material in here? Uh, we've got a central dust extraction system, and... A job like this, I am really getting rid of the fumes of the material and just letting it build up in the bottom and then cleaning it out every 20, 30 components. And is there a way with parts like this, any special machining techniques that you're adopting? Because uh, you, you're obviously not using any coolant, are you? No, we're not using coolant. Um, we run everything dry in the whole factory. We run centre through air on this, which has been a bit of a revelation for us, to be honest. Um, I run it on most tools, keeps everything clear, tapping doesn't bind up, deep hole drilling. Oh, hang on, so you've got air going through got, the tool? Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's about 90 psi or so. Okay, so when you're, when you're doing any drilling, tapping or machine yeah. that, you can be blowing the, 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 the remnant plastic out? Yeah, exactly right. And if we're not blowing it directly through to the tool tip, we're just blowing it through from the collet. So it's getting through, it's clearing it, and um, yeah, it's just keeping the workpiece clean, really. And I note from this that most of the stuff you're doing is kind of positional, isn't it? You're just doing four or five face machining on this. Yep. Do you have a plan to um, adopt five axis simultaneous with this machine? Yeah, we do. I mean, when we bought the machine, we thought that it would be no time before we asked them to come down and get it running simultaneous, which is dead easy for them to do. Um, but it's all been three plus two work. Uh, we probably quoted maybe one job and full five axis. Apart from that, it's the stuff that we brought in from the rest of the factory. We've said, we've looked at parts and we thought we can really sort of improve the way we do this. And sort of month in, month out, it gets more and more components coming over to this. So it's getting used a lot more. Could we have a, an example of that? So is this something that you've done uh, or you used to do on another machine that yep. you're now doing on this? Could you show us? Yep, sure. Um, this component, for example, that we're running right this moment, um, with a sort of a deepish hole, it's what 160, 170 mil deep. Uh, this would now be done in two operations. It gets halfway through, turn it over, run the other side, 
Well, this takes, well, it's on the machine actually, it takes two minutes 53 at the moment and it is that total machining time on, on both ops? Total machining time, yeah. So there'd be, what, 30 seconds loading, 30 seconds loading. Um, and it would have been a minimum of six minutes this part before. So a, th a third of the time uh, as a result of the, the newer machine and the, the high speed machine, the new technology? Yeah, about that, sure, yeah. And wh how do you go about I noticed that's quite a deep hole in there. I mean, how are you making sure you don't break your drills or and you get the <laughs> material out? Right, well, we're just using that air blast and um, drilling coming up putting a dwell on for a couple of seconds, letting the air remove the swath, and then back in we go and just drill it to the bottom. Have you got any others you can show us as well? Yes, yeah, sure. This is, um, well, it's, it's relatively the same kind of component, but it's a, it's a lot larger. It shows you the sort of size you can actually get into a small machine like this. That surprised me, the size of that. Are you, hol are you holding that in the vertical plate? Yeah, we're holding this across um, a land grid plate with two vices. Tipping it over to 90 degrees, that's being drilled over 300 mil deep. And you're able to do that with this ZX? Yeah, just about. We have to bring the drill in quite close, but um, yeah, we can get in there. And um, yeah, it's doing, it's doing that complete part. It has a second op on another machine, which is just facing the back off. So, I mean, that's no big deal. But we're probably taking five or six minutes to machine that component, where about 20 minutes work before that could have been. Okay, so that's a quarter of the time. Yep. And finally, so the one I really like is this uh, connector box. Could we have a look at that one? This is, uh, this is a new design, isn't it? It is, yes. It's, um, it's a composite material, and it was designed for well, flame retardancy, and um, it, there's no arcing can get through this. So it's got a low smoke if there was a fire. And, um, How does it handle machining? Because it's, is it not brittle at all? Uh, no, it's actually, the material's designed to be very machinable, so it's actually very nice to machine. It holds sizes well, it doesn't move when it gets hot. So, in fact, it's, it's very nice material to machine. And, and talking about sizes, do you have, looking at these parts, I know we've looked at concepts and uh, improving cycle times, but yep. do you have to maintain a lot of accuracies and tolerances with these parts? Yeah, I mean, as a rule, I mean, some things will be half a mil, so it's quite straightforward. But, yeah, we go down to... Are we talking microns on some things? Well, on this, this bore here, we've got, I think there's a plus and minus 10 microns on that. So an adjustable boring head in the machine, and it holds tolerance. And what's interesting to me as well is when I first walked in here, I thought, Fanuc supplied to you this machine like this with the Perspex sides, the, the, so you can see into the machine and also the, some of the extraction mechanisms you've got. But you've done a lot of that yourself, we haven't have. you? We have, yeah. We, um, we removed the, the sides, mainly so we could get in, we could clean the machine out. We routed out some polycarbonate side panels for it. Uh, we don't run coolant, so we've got no coolant around the back. We've got a, um, a catcher that catches any oil that drips away, which is what they use at their displays. For instance, at Mac, when it's on a carpet, they don't want the oil dripping out the back of the machine. They supplied us with that, and yeah, we've um, sort of modified it to our... And, and how many hours a day is this machine actually in operation? Um, it's probably 50% of the week, every week, I'd say. And when it's going, it's going quick? It's going very quick, yeah. So final point, it's been a burning question for me thinking of this all along. Have you got a service contract on this new one? No, I don't think we'll be needing one.